Hello everyone, so today we'll be talking about puperal pyrexia, my history taking template. Yeah, my references. So let's go straight to the template. So first, in the history, you need to identify the patient. So identification details, there are 10 identification details listed here. Um, plus 2, which are BMI and blood group. BMI is important because obesity is a risk factor for puperal pyrexia. After that, you go to the presenting complaint and history of presenting complaint, which should be the bulk of your history. So first, in this bulk, you need to ask why is she here so the presenting complaint so this lady presented with a fever of 38.5 degrees celsius eight days post normal vaginal delivery so i've divided the hopc into uh, three uh, sets of questions so questions based on differentials so first you have to think of a few differential diagnosis for puparapyrexia and ask questions based on your top differentials. Then you're gonna do systemic review because um, pregnant women can also have infections that non-pregnant people have. So you need to uh, review the whole system. And the third one is uh, chronological questions in the order of antenatal, then intrapartum, then postpartum. So let's have a look at this one by one. So first, you want to ask about the questions based on the differentials. So um, your top differentials, uh, your top number one differential should be endometritis because that's the most common cause of puperal pyrexia. Um, after that, uh, other gynecological causes that you can think of include perineal infection, mastitis, uh, and urinary tract infections. So let's first look at uh, what we ask in endometritis. So in endometritis, there will be lower abdominal pain and um, you can ask about the vaginal discharge because after pregnancy, um, usually there's a normal discharge known as lochia. It, it will be uh, bright red um, for about three to four days then um, it can become red to brown color in uh, for the first four weeks and then after that it should be white or yellowish color however it shouldn't be more odorous or purulent so um, you can ask about the discharge does it uh, have an order does it have a bad order Next, we'll look at perineal questions. So for perineal questions, you need to ask what was the mode of delivery? So um, if the mode of delivery was through a C-section, then the C-section scar is a potential site of infection. So you need to ask whether the scar, is it pain around the scar area? Is there any discharge coming out from the scar? And then if it was true vaginal delivery, were there any complications during the delivery? Was there any spontaneous perineal tear? Or was uh, episiotomy done? Or was there any instrumental delivery? An instrumental delivery using forceps has a higher risk of high vaginal tear and cervical tear. So any tear, any break in the skin prone to infection. So you can ask about presence of any of these tears. Uh, perineal tenderness, so the, do you feel pain down below? Is there any discharge from down below? Next, we'll look at the questions for mastitis. So for mastitis, quite simple. You ask them if they are breastfeeding and then if it's painful. And then after that, uh, don't forget urinary questions. I have a uh, fun mnemonic for urinary questions. Uh, so it's fun DH frequency, urgency, nocturia, dysuria, and hematuria. So ask about these symptoms. Next, we go to systemic review. So systemic review, basically, you ask from head to toe. Um, so in the history, you ask any headache and then any constitutional symptoms like fever, chill, malaise, loss of appetite, 
then going to the mouth and chest, ask about cough, runny nose, sore throat, any shortness of breath, pneumonia is an important differential. Um, then you go down to the abdominal area, any abdominal pain, any nausea, vomiting, and then bowel or bladder habit changes, any calf pain, any body ache, uh, they could have dengue as well, any rash. Uh, dengue rash, uh, dengue can have rash, uh, tox uh, toxic shock syndrome can also have rash. And then after the systemic review, we will go to the chronological questions. So uh, first you start with the antenatal questions. Each of these questions, uh, how to phrase the question is in blue. And then the risk factors that we are trying to elicit through these questions are listed in red color. So first you can ask, um, during a pregnancy, were the blood tests okay? Uh, do, you, do you have diabetes during a pregnancy? HB was okay. Was it okay? Because uh, GDM is a risk factor for puerperal pyrexia. Anemia also is a risk factor of for puerperal pyrexia. So um, after that, you can ask any problems during pregnancy because we are trying to find out if they have done any amniocentesis or cervical cell clutch. So they might tell you that the cervix was uh, insufficient, so they had to do a cervical cell clutch or that when during prenatal testing, screening for Down syndrome, they had high risk, more than one in 250 chance. So they went ahead and tried and diagnosed it using an amniocentesis, which is which these two are risk factors for pure parapyrexia. Then after that, you can ask any infections during pregnancy, uh, any discharge and the smell of the discharge. So the risk factors we are trying to elicit here are chorioamnionitis, so the infection during pregnancy, and also vaginal discharge, especially bacterial vaginosis, which increases the risk of puerperal pyrexia and endometritis. So after that, you can ask, did your water break before your contractions and how long before the baby delivered? We are trying to elicit prolonged rupture of membrane. See, uh, because the membrane is a barrier between the amniotic fluid and the baby and basically the uterus contents, which is supposed to be sterile, and is separating this environment from the, bact the bacterial flora of the vagina and the cervix. So um, once the membrane ruptures, uh, sometimes the contractions might start within 24 hours. However, if the contractions don't start within 24 hours, usually we recommend to induce the labor because the longer you wait, the more prone you are to infection. Next, intrapartum questions. So you want to know about prolonged labor. So uh, if you ask the mother, how long was your labor? They might not be able to answer you most of the time. So how you can get around this is you can ask them what time they went to the labor room and then what time did they deliver the baby. Usually they can remember these things. And then postpartum, um, you want to know about retained product of conception. Um, you can ask, did everything come out? Uri means placenta in Malay. Uh, did the placenta came, come out as well? Anything left inside? And then ask a ask, Ask about the baby because you want to know uh, preterm or postterm the baby coming out too early or too late are also risk factors. So um, how's the baby? Uh, how many weeks was the baby born? Then what was done uh, regarding her current hospital admission? So maybe she was given given antibiotics, maybe not yet. Uh, maybe some bloods were taken. And then uh, how is she now? Is she feeling better? The fever gone down yet? Uh, is she feeling tired? Uh, uh, the loss of appetite, is it better? Things like that. Then we have some mnemonics here, uh, which are PM gods, FFF, SSS, and sprinkle some ice. So PM GOT stands for past medical, gynecological, uh, obstetric, 
drug and surgical history. So the relevant ones, uh, relevant risk factors are here. So past medical history, you want to ask about diabetes and HIV. These are immunosuppressive states. Uh, past gynecological history, you want to ask about previous pelvic infections. This risk factor for piperopyrexia and piperosepsis. Drug any immunosuppressive drugs such as NSAIDs and steroids. Um, FFF stands for family history, family planning, and finance. So for family history, you want to ask about any family history of sore throat or skin infections. This is trying to elicit any pharyngitis and impartigo or cellulitis in the family due to group A strep. Group A strep is actually the most common pathogen for um, piperal sepsis. So um, any of the family members having uh, the group A strep infection might have passed the pathogen to the pregnant woman. So uh, this is an important risk factor to elicit. Um, family planning, probably not that relevant. Finance, uh, low social economic status is actually a risk factor as well. Then you go to SSS, which stands for social history, sexual history, and cervical smear history. Uh, and the relevant one is the social history. Other than smoking and alcohol, you can ask about intravenous drug use uh, because this increases the risk of uh, sepsis. Okay. And then lastly, you ask about ideas, concerns, and expectations. Okay. I think that's all for my presentation. I hope it helps. Thank you for watching the video.